What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are back with a top eight match from the Italy Vault Tour over in Bologna. Huge shout out to the lovely Il Viso for allowing me to use the footage to add the commentary to. On the left, we've got Fortello with... Let's just call it the Hurley deck. It is a Brobnar Logo Sanctum deck. We've actually got an Age of Ascension deck, so we're finally seeing some of those. Couple Titan Mechanic, Logos Ambassador, some cool stuff in there. Two Ganger Chieftain. Although, no... No Drummonaut. And then on the right, we've got a Lesto playing Honk the Beneficially Topaz, a Brobnar Dis Shadows deck. With free Shula, a couple of Dust Imp, two Nerve Blast, two Noddy the Thief, free Ganger Chieftain. This is a Call of the Archons deck. And I think we are just about ready to get rolling. A Lesto starts the game off, and he starts off with Shadows, chucking down. Is that Magda the Rat? I can't quite see. I think it's a Magda the Rat. Anyway, over to Fortello, who decides to start with a Sanctum turn. And he gets himself a creature down nice and quickly. I believe that is an A-Bond the Armorsmith, which gives plus one armor to each of your creatures. And there's an action that then gives it another plus one armor, which is pretty gosh darned good. That helps. Or am I lying to you? Is that actually a Logos card? Doesn't matter. It's gone now, ladies and gentlemen. It has been beaten up. It has been taken down. We do see a Blood of Titans on there, which will give a plus five power. I believe that was actually a Logos card from Fortello last turn. Now he goes Brobnar. Gets down a Lollop the Titanic. Biggest creature in Age of Ascension. Though, deals no damage when it is attacked, only when it is attacking. Oh, and he's actually got... Now, has he got his own? Is that his own Blood of Titans there? Yes, it is his own Blood of Titans, making it a 16 power creature. And he takes down Ganger Chieftain using it. Now, bearing in mind, he has Might Makes Right in his deck, allowing him to sacrifice any number of creatures of power 25 or more and forge a key at no cost. That Lol at the Titanic is already a 16 power creature. That's like 70% of the way there. That's pretty good. No, a bit less than 70%. But you know what I'm going with. It's a large part of the way there. Of course, he's been fighting with it, so he's been taking a bunch of damage in return. Now, it looks like we've got a war chest down from Alesto here. Gain one amber for each enemy creature that was destroyed in a fight this turn. Though it is an action, so it does have to be activated. It's not just a, a static thing. It's quite nice, though. So, we've got a lot of Brobnar going on nice and early here. An awful lot of Brobnar right at the beginning of the game. Also, I know it's not terribly important, but I'm fairly sure it was a Titan mechanic at the beginning of the game. There we go. Now, we do appear to have some darkness going on here, but we will follow it the best we can regardless. Looks like we've got a couple of action cards being played. Now, we are into shadows here. And looks like that's a special delivery. See, a lot of special delivery coming around in decks lately. And I want to say it was a ghostly hand? May or may not have been a ghostly hand. Either way, we got Lollop the Titanic here. And now what's happening with Lollop? Oh, he's been completely healed, ladies and gentlemen. He's been completely healed. Healing Blast, fully heal a creature. If you healed four or more, gain two amber. Think it's fair to say he definitely healed two or more there. So that is a really, really good play. And that might be a shield of justice for the remainder of the turn. Each friendly creature cannot be damaged. Though there's no Sanctum creatures with which to fight. Although there is an Abe on the Armor Smith down. So he can't be damaged. Yeah, might not end up being too relevant. But there is an Abe on the armor smith down there. Gives all of your creatures plus one armor. And for the remainder of the turn, if you use the action, all other friendly creatures gain plus one armor. 
Oh, but it's already been removed from the field, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I believe it's actually using the special delivery there. Special delivery deals free damage to a flank creature, and if it's destroyed, it purges. Shula comes down to steal an amber. That's going to help him out quite nicely. A second Shula comes down to steal a second amber. He does play a third Shula, but his opponent doesn't have four amber or more now, so it wouldn't do much good. Looks like the... Is that the Gang of Chieftain that's finally gone down there? Alesto here, certainly getting himself a lot of amber rolling on here, and this is really, really nice at this stage. He's sitting there with at least seven, maybe eight amber. Fortello's still got his lol at the Titanic with 16 power, but he needs a little bit more. So he's going for Sanctum. No, he's going for Brobna here. Gets himself down a Bingle Bang Bang, gets himself down a Groggins. Now, Groggins is eight power. He's actually got enough creatures down now that he can might makes right. He's got, I believe, 26 power in total. So if he can find his might makes right, he can forge a key at no cost next turn. Having Lollop the Titanic with Blood of Titans and a might makes right, that's a pretty nice combo to have in a deck, ladies and gentlemen. That is a very nice combo to have in a deck. So what do we have here? Going over to Alesto then. Oh, he is able to get rid of the Bingle Bang Bang there. He has forged his first key, incidentally. He then plays down a Noddy the Thief. Can't do much this turn, but he's got an action that steals an Amber. So Alesto kind of content. He's forged his first key. His opponent isn't forging a key. He's got himself a decent little battle line, a bit of Amber. He's doing all right. Now... The thing is, it, it really depends on how soon Fortello can draw into Might Makes Right. So he plays down a Professor Sartakin, he plays down an Archimedes, plays down a Helper Bot. Remember, the coming into play ability of Helper Bot does allow you to play a non-Logos card this turn. So that's going to be kind of funky. What's he going to go for? <gasps> Might Makes Right! Please play Might Makes Right! Oh, uh, ooh! Now... Is that... Is that Logo's Ambassador? Not 100% sure. Oh, uh, I believe it is Logo's Ambassador. No, I'm lying to you. It is Prince Derek Unifier. Gain free amber if you control creatures from three different houses, which he does, because that's his Sanctum card. He's got Lord of the Titanic and Groggins from Brobnar, and he's got Halper Bot, Archimedes, and Professor Sutterkin from Logos. So he's actually ending the turn on eight amber here. Not bad amber generation. And of course, he's got a heck of a battle line going on. And there really is that two part thing here. He's not. Don't get me wrong right grabbing the amber here is good grabbing the amber is a huge bonus but it's not just grabbing the amber that does it it's grabbing the amber while being able to have a really good really bulky battle line that's what's crucial here so alesto here does get down a low mirror flame fist oh my cornishness proper came out then if your opponent has seven amber or more they lose two now, he's put himself, he's put his opponent down from 8 to 6. So, Fortello is still on, on check, albeit only just. Question is, can Alesto get rid of one more Amber? Traditionally speaking, Brobnar are not great at making your opponent lose Amber here. Um, I don't know if there's anything else he's got. Burn the stockpile. If your opponent has seven amber or more, they lose four. That would have been a better card here, but unfortunately, irrelevant. Wasn't in hand. It's always nice looking at your uh, the player's deck list and saying what they should have done, but remember, you can only play the cards you've got in front of you at the time. It's all well and good me going, oh, burn the stockpile would have been a way better play, but if he doesn't have a burn the stockpile in hand, that becomes somewhat of a redundant comment. So, Alesto here is just clearing up his battle line a little bit. He's making room for something. What's he making room for? Uh, maybe a Ganger Chieftain. Maybe a Smash. Which I still don't like as a name of a creature. Oh, it is a Ganger Chieftain. Allows you to ready and fight with a neighboring giant. Or neighboring creature. So, he readies and fights with Loma Flamefist. That's quite nice. 
gets rid of Professor Sutterkin. Now, Professor Sutterkin, which you have to say that fast, it's just the way it is. You draw a card for each friendly Logos creature when you reap. So he would have been reaping and drawing free cards. We saw a couple of games ago the advantage one player got from just having just more cards than their opponent. You don't want to run into that, frankly. Okay. So, speaking of a nice battle line here, we are we are seeing a lot of Brobnar. Alesto's actually got five Brobnar creatures here. That's huge. Now, it looks like he's actually played the Smash. And when you play it, you get to stun a creature. Clearly, he's stunning the 16 power Lollop the Titanic. <laughs> I would be very surprised if he found another target that was even remotely on the same level as good as that. And now, Alesto's in a great position. Now, he hasn't stopped his opponent forging. It looks very much like Fortello's got six amber there. Or has he stopped him forging? It's not forging a key right now. Just playing a bunch of Sanctum creatures down. Three in total. So... Oh, he's actually playing a Doorstep to Heaven. And then there he goes. Now, did we miss something? Maybe he didn't have enough amber. It can be very hard to tell with some of these tokens. Either way, Fortello hasn't forged his first key. That's the most important thing here. He hasn't forged his first key. And that means that Alesto here... Oh, looks like he's going shadows. He's got... He's got at least four Brobnar creatures on the board here. So he is just getting rid of a random card from his opponent's hand. Oh, and they get to look at the hand as well. That's nice. Uh, Imperial Traitor says, look at your opponent's hand. You may choose and purge a Sanctum card in it. It's not... It's a ridiculously specific card. But as it happens... It, you know, he's playing against a Sanctum deck. That's really cool. Against a non-Sanctum deck would have been irrelevant. Okay, I was right. He did have enough amber to forge a key. Okay, I thought I was going silly then. I'm sitting there looking at both the battle lines and going, I can't see anything there that's increasing the cost of forging. And then I'm looking at Alesto has no miasma or anything like that to stop the forging. It's nice that he forged a key. I thought I was going silly. So Fortello has forged a key. I consider myself vindicated. So, Alesto here... No, he's gone Shadows. Uh, incidentally, yeah, so he played Imperial Traitor. He's now playing Ghostly Hand. Oh, gain two Amber if your opponent has exactly one. Steal it. That's a nice card right now. And now he's got a lot of Amber. Now, the good news is he's got Noddy the Thief. Does his opponent even have any Amber to steal? I don't think he does, so he's actually just reaping with it. Noddy the Thief is not made for reaping. Noddy the Thief is made for stealing. But I suppose when your opponent's got no amber, reaping and gaining some amber is even better. I mean, stealing is better than reaping, but having to reap because your opponent's got nothing to steal, that's a nice position to be in. Now, speaking of nice positions to be in, Alesto's sitting there with a forged key. His opponent has zero amber, although he is even on keys. He's got, by my estimation, 10 amber. Oh, it's hard to tell with some of these tokens. Maybe 9 amber. Somewhere around 9 or 10 amber. And he's got 4 Brobnar creatures, 2 Dis and 1 Shadows. So he can go Brobnar next turn and just go reap, 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 reap and get 4 amber. And I'm not saying he should, and I probably suggest this in videos too much. But it's one of my moves in Keyforge. When I'm ahead in the game, when I'm in a good position... You can afford to just reap. And there's always a balance to be made here, right? It's not just, let's just reap until I win. It's reaping while checking your opponent's board and making sure they're slow enough and they're not going to overtake you, etc. There is always some balance to be made here. So Groggins comes down and just takes out one of those creatures. I believe that was the smash. So smash is gone now. 
So that's quite nice. Well, nice for Fortello, less good for Alesto. Oh, now he's just he's just running through the board at this stage. And I mean, bro, this is what Brobnar does, right? Brobnar does this. Brobnar just clears boards. It's it's frankly the point of Brobnar. Now, yeah, and he's just. Oh, has he got the might makes right? Is this might makes right, ladies and gentlemen? Is it Mike Makes Right? I believe it is. Is he turning over a key? Yes, he is. He forged his second key with Might Makes Right. And like I say, having a lull at the Titanic with a Blood of Titans attached, giving you a 16 power creature, really, really puts you in a good position. So even though he had zero amber at the beginning of the turn, and one amber at the end of the turn, he still managed to forge his second key. Now, Alesto, not to be outdone, has also forged his second key. Now, the judge is pointing out what I was thinking there. He's purged the cards, but Might Makes Right says Sacrifice. What does Sacrifice purge? Am I going crazy? Hey-ho. So, either way, we've got both players sitting there at two keys. In a really good position, we've got some really... we got large battle lines, which is kind of cool. There's a lot out there. Okay, Sacrifice is Discard. Hey-ho. Right, so over to Alesto then. He's forged his second key, and he's already on check. He's already on check. Oh, he's archiving them because of Archimedes. There we go. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Those creatures were archived because of Archimedes. There we go. Okay, that took me slightly longer to realize than it should, but that's all right. Sacrifice does mean discard, but Archimedes... I mean, the amount of discussion there's been on Archimedes, you'd think I'd notice that by now, right? So now he's got Professor Sartikin going straight back down, and... Ah, he's just building up his battle line quite nicely here. This is good. This is really good. But he still needs to stop his opponent. Because remember, as it stands at the moment, Alesto's on check. Alesto's got what looks like six amber. So, look, Vortello's got... And there's lab work archiving. Vortello's... The, the difference is I archive off to the side. He archives under his keys. Plays a Grump Buggy. He played a Halperbot previously. That's how he's allowed to play a non-Sanctum, a non-Logos creature. Does Alesto have enough now to forge his final key? Okay. Just looking at the board there, trying to figure out what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? Looking at all the annoying things on his opponent's board and thinking, right, how can I get rid of these? And Fortello, and we see this way more in Age of Ascension decks. You get big battle lines. That's exactly what's happened here. Age of Ascension as an expansion leads itself to bigger battle lines. That's just the way it is. And as it stands, Fortello's got a lot of creatures out. But like I've said, you've got to stop your opponent forging as much as you've got to forge. Now, the reason Alesto isn't forging there is because of the Grump Buggy. Your opponent's keys cost plus one for each friendly creature with power five or higher. I can't see exactly all of them there, but there are a bunch of them. That's why Alesto's looking at the battle line. He's going, right, that Grump Buggy is stopping me forging. I need to make sure that I can just take out a bunch of his creatures. That'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. That will absolutely do it. Coward's End, destroy each undamaged creature, gain free chains. When you absolutely, positively have to board wipe your opponent, it's a pretty gosh darn good one to go for. So now Alesto's got more than enough to be forging because Grump Buggy is doing nothing. And now it's over to Fortello to decide, what can I do? Can he stop Alesto here? 
because Leicester's in a great position. That grunt buggy was an awesome play. That grunt buggy was a great play. But unfortunately, the coward's end might have trumped it and won Alesto the game. <laughs> it has. Fortello concedes. Alesto wins. What a play from that coward's end. Got to hand it to Fortello there. Playing the helper bot on that huge logo's turn. Chucking down the grunt buggy to increase the cost of forging by quite a lot. With a battle line like that, it really was a huge play. But unfortunately, his opponent had Coward's End ready to go. Thank you to Will Vizzo for letting us use the footage. I am very, very grateful. Thank you to both chats for being on stream. Congratulations to Alesto. Commiserations to Fortello. And... Yeah. Oh, we're blocking the camera. Sorry if we're not supposed to be seeing this. Don't hate me. Yeah, make sure you tell me what you think about this game in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice, and then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about Keyforge and whatever other games take my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.